a worldwide crisis that affects us all. Daily life seems more like a whirlwind. Stress reigns in the 21st century. But for some time now, a form of defense against anxiety has been experiencing widening success. Massage in all its forms. Today, massage is a solution to our overactivity. It allows you to shut off from the outside world, restore your energy, and reclaim your body. In Thailand, the growing massage culture has spawned the opening of dozens of specialized schools. They come here from all over the world, like Nawel, who has given up everything to become a masseuse. There are some positions that are a bit stressful. Mike, a former member of the U.S. Air Force, has also changed his life. With the wooden tools, we use sound to transmit from the outside part of the skin. In Paris, shiatsu massage in the workplace is the big trend at the moment. The goal? To de-stress the employees. You completely forget where you are. In Canada, an association travels the country schools to teach children how to massage each other. And we go back down. Yeah, that's right. That completely changes the child's behavior, even outside the classroom. From the finest spas in the world to the back rooms with blind masseuses, the new stars of the field, we plunge deep into the heart of this new trend, an ancestral one. Chiang Mai in northern Thailand, some 400 miles from steamy Bangkok. Here the atmosphere is much more calm, friendly. English isn't spoken on every street corner, like in the south of the country, but things are changing progressively. In recent years, tourists wanting to experience a Thailand different from its stereotypes come here. This new development that the city is experiencing is due in part to massage. Massages can be had at every street corner, in every neighborhood. Temples also offer up their quarters to masseuses. Under the courtyard just next door, the sessions aren't really more expensive here, but they offer an additional mystical touch. And what distinguishes Chiang Mai from other cities are its massage schools. People come here from all over the world to learn massage and deepen their knowledge of Thai massage. It's 8 a.m. In the heart of the Sunshine School, a school specialized in Thai massage, we can already hear the morning prayers resonate. In this school, the students come from all four corners of the earth, a Brazilian, Spaniards, an American, some French. To practice and earn their living through massage in their own country, it is essential to receive the teachings from real Thai masseuses. Because Thai massage has nothing to do with other massages. 
It should put your energies back into place, and sometimes in a way that is not always agreeable. Mm -hmm. Okay, you stay here and come closer, come a little closer, and then lift up your butter and sink. So in. this is down, yes, yeah. Down. Okay. Sink down. Yeah. You feel it in the stomach? Yeah. I, I'm sure it's the correct place, but somehow I don't feel anything. Yeah, now I feel. Okay. It was a little bit more down. You have to feel from the shoulder uh -huh. like this. Okay? Uh -huh. Close your knee. Yes. Not not too much. Just on the shoulders. And sink. Is that right for you? Uh -huh. Like this? Yeah. yeah. Now I feel the knee. Okay. You have to feel compressed to the shoulder and stay. The massaging of muscles and soft flesh is not treated as in other massages. Here, energy points are pinpointed. So the technique must be perfectly mastered. If not, Injuries may occur, or even worse, real lesions. Okay. Nawel is Moroccan. She was a top executive in a large corporation when she had a burnout two months ago. She literally cracked under the increasing pressure of her job. Today she wants to change her life. A return to the body and essential values motivated her to become a masseuse. Oh, okay. This. Fast. Uh -huh. Not let her get in pain too long. Uh -huh. <laughs> Inhale and exhale. You bend the knee to the chest and kick. Uh -huh. Ooh. Take a deep breath. Exhale. <laughs> More? There are some positions that are a bit stressful. People come to learn, cannot read, cannot write, cannot speak, can do Thai massage. Even deaf, uh, blind, you can see, handicapped, no legs, no arms, but still can massage. Two hands come, pulling lumbar, lower body. Yeah. Uh -huh, yes. Ah. Watch a little bit, now give the space not to close. Uh -huh. Now Wells' classes will last two months and cost a little more than $1,500. The young Moroccan plans to move to Australia to start a new life, far from her previous position in human resources and her busy office hours. A radical change that we often find in the world of massage. That's what happened to this man. Mike Chosek. We're in one of the 200 temples in the city of Chiang Mai. Mike has his regular customers here. The American moved to the city four years ago. He's trained in Thai massage and comes to the temple to massage his clients and renting a simple mattress for several baht, the local currency. So. Mike has an appointment with a young Brazilian. Seeing him like this, it's hard to imagine his former life. He was a military man, working in the most dangerous zones of the world before he cracked and changed his life. I was uh, in the U United States Air Force for 21 years, and um, my specialty was bomb disposal, but we say EOD, explosive ordnance disposal. And so I retired about uh, 10 years ago, uh, after 21 years of service, and uh, admittedly, um, the massage profession is quite a big difference than what I did before. So a lot of people may ask why, but maybe that's the reason, because it is a big difference. To set himself apart from the hundreds of masseuses that are here, Mike specialized in a very particular technique, Tok Sen. When I do massage, with my hands and my weight, I can press on the muscles and go deeper, deeper, deeper. It may feel uncomfortable to the client. With use of percussion, with the wooden tools, we use sound to transmit from the outside part of the skin into the muscles and in deeper to the muscles and hopefully to cause a release of the muscle fibers that may be contracted. 
So sound can travel further and more comfortably than the pressure of my hand or my forearm or elbow. Tuxen is an old technique, um, new to the Western world, but many countries have their own style of percussion. This particular technique is from the northern part of Thailand, but you can find similar techniques throughout all of Asia. They just call it different, use different tools. And even within this area, this particular hammer, there's many styles. Some are longer, some are flat-headed. Um, this is common to this particular temple and the instructor of the temple. In Thailand, if Mike has more and more Tok Sen fans, and he lives decently from his work, there is yet another category of masseuses that are even more successful, the blind. In Asia, in the most remote villages, being blind is an extremely difficult trial regarding daily life. With no specially adapted structures, parents sometimes have to attach their non-sighted children to trees so that they do not injure themselves. In this countryside, the blind lead a difficult life. But as we approach the big cities, they have a completely different status. They become highly coveted to become masseuses. Like here in this shop, where there are only blind masseuses. It is barely 9 a.m. and customers are already waiting for their appointments at the reception, while still others are already at work. The faces of the customers speak for themselves regarding the style of massage, but all are unanimous. The blind feel much more through their sense of touch. A few dozen miles away, the star of all blind Thai masseuses can be found. In this residential quarter, one address attracts massage lovers from all over the world. Ajahn Sinchai is the master in the field. He's been working for 37 years in hospital centers from Bangkok to Chiang Mai. He specializes in massages for paralysis and re-education after accidents. Mike Chosek is one of his disciples and he often comes to his home to watch him. I believe he's the best for his experience and also for the heart that he puts into his massage. So not only because he has a significant amount of training and that he's been doing massage for almost 44 years, but this is his life. Today, a young Japanese woman has come to see Ajahn. She doesn't speak a word of English, but she still made the trip here by herself to see Ajahn. Many Japanese come to Chiang Mai for massages. Ajahn Sinchai also teaches his Thai massage technique to many students. But on his agenda, there is one country that comes back more and more for his training. France. Paris, in the heart of the city. Christiane is on her way to work. Hi, let me give you a hand. I'm going straight, thank you. I'll be fine, thanks. Thank you. Sure, no problem. Straight ahead. Yeah, thank you. Oh, wait, one second. There's some more chairs. I'll help you. Okay. There you go. <laughs> thank you. Christiane is a masseuse, and like every day, she goes to her massage salon, whose owner is also blind. Right, I'm 
I'm going to massage you with oil and I'll massage the whole body. So if there's an area that bothers you, let me know. Is that okay? Okay. Your head, your scalp, your face? That's perfect. Okay, you comfortable? Yeah, fine. Okay, we can start. Breathe deeply. Christian's clients also want to keep their privacy, a point that appeals to all those who are reluctant to undress. The person who's being massaged doesn't feel like they're being watched, observed. I think that they can be much more at ease. If they have a complex or there are things that bother them, they don't feel like they're being observed as they do when they're being massaged by a sighted person, for example. I still imagine how the person looks, but it's true that above all, it's a body that I have in my hands that I'm trying to care for. When I imagine the face, it's true that I imagine how they look. Sometimes I tell myself, oh, this person looks like that. From their voice, I didn't imagine them to look like that. Or actually, that matches up. Is the pressure okay? Yes, perfect. She's really different from a sighted masseuse. Really, she gets straight to the point. In general, with a sighted masseuse, you have to explain a bit where it hurts or where you want him to concentrate. Just now, I didn't even have to speak. In France, as all over Europe, the public prefers a relaxing style of massage. No interest in being tortured here. They prefer a Swedish type of massage with oils. That's what they like. But another major trend has emerged in the world of massage, that of massage in the workplace. A Paris suburb on a Wednesday morning. This limousine is heading back to its garage, where it'll join a dozen others. This is a company specializing in renting deluxe limos with chauffeurs. Here, work can be stressful. Between those who make the appointments and calculate the trips just tight enough to make several trips, and the chauffeurs who get stuck in traffic jams and other road hazards, you can feel the tension. And it's Patricia who comes back to distress everyone. She was hired to practice shiatsu massage on the employees. Hello, Emily. Hello. Hello, hi. How are you? Hello, Jeanne. Hey, Patricia. Are you fine? Yeah, and you? I have files on each person who comes to do shiatsu where I note their tensions. At each session, we discuss their physical and psychological tensions and also their emotions and how they're feeling at the moment. That lets me keep a little background on them and see how they evolve. A small conference room is made available to Patricia. She leaves her mattress here all the time. She greets each person next door for a short interview beforehand. Talking about what is going well and not well is part of the shiatsu. Originating in Japan, shiatsu is a preventative medicine. It can also treat functional disorders. Jian is the first of a long series this morning. Her session lasts one hour. Hello, Jian. How are you? My stomach's better. Your stomach feels better. After the last massage. Fine. I have a little bit of tension in the upper back. Still at the trapezius. Yeah, that's it. On both sides. Yeah. Do you remember to breathe while you're putting your hands on your belly? 
Yeah, I do my breathing exercises and I try to massage my belly a little, like you showed me the last time. Personally, I really feel the lack when I don't see Patricia for one or two weeks. Like that, it does me a lot of good when I see her again. Shiatsu is based on the principle of meridians that must be felt and followed with the hands. Meridians are lines, vital energies that circulate through the body. They are our vital lines, and when they are unbalanced, the masseuse, using his pressure with his thumbs, puts them back into place. But not everyone in this company is totally convinced. A large majority of people come to do shiatsu, and there are others who don't like the technique and stop coming. But there's no real refusal. They tried one or two sessions and then stopped because it didn't correspond to their energy. You're in such a state of well-being afterwards that going back to your office and concentrating is a little difficult. But at the same time, it helps because you're in a much more relaxed state of mind. Shiatsu sessions, an osteopath once a month, memberships to the pool. This company has invested in the well-being of its employees. But we're a far cry from the standardization of this type of service offered in companies. And today, for stressed executives, shiatsu at home is the big trend. This is Pascal. He's a real estate agent. And this morning he's giving a last minute sweep. When you sell a house, everything must be perfect. I'm waiting for my client to come see the house. He's coming without his wife. The visits are often made in several stages. At first, he'll visit by himself. It's often the husband who makes the first visit. And then it's often the wife who decides in the end. <laughs> Here we have the living room with cathedral ceiling. Before, there was a floor, which they took out to give this feeling of height and bring in more light. Everything was entirely redone, in terms of insulation, heating and sound as well, of course. Pascal sells few houses each year, but each time he does, they are jackpot sales, as he calls them, with big commissions, so he knows all about stress. Physically, it's really tiring, but the psychological stress is much stronger because it's linked with the work. You're paid on the sales, not on the number of visits. It's true that when you show a house, you try to give the best of yourself, and sometimes you just don't get results, or you get no feedback. Real results are really scarce. But it's true that the sums involved are pretty large. But for Pascal, the solution for his anxiety, which could disrupt his work, is massage with a practitioner at home. Florence Mornay has been contacted by Pascal. It's the first time that she comes to his place. Florence is a professional masseuse. She comes to see her clients at home with her portable futon. With Pascal, as with the others, a dialogue is first established to become familiar with the client's personality. It's an accumulation of several things. There's a professional fatigue, for sure. In relation to the real estate crisis, but also due to personal issues that I've had. I have an adult daughter who's 21. I also have a small son and I have worries with this mom. There's an ensemble of things that make me feel stressed today. I feel it affecting my sleep and my energy, in comparison to before in any case. There's a need for dialogue between the masseuse and the person receiving the massage. It's essential because we need to communicate and establish a sense of trust and to determine how we'll work and what we need to concentrate on during the session, what's urgent. We don't have the right to say treat 
because we're not doctors, but we relieve tensions and we help people to heal themselves. Just let yourself go. Let your tensions go. Exhale. Let go. Let go again. Again. Inhale all the way back. And let go. Again. And let go to the back. And relax. Really relax. Breathe. The shoulder blades are connected with all that is heart and lungs. Here in the middle of the back, all that is respiratory, and here it's elimination, as we work with energies on these three levels, breathing, digestion, and elimination, it creates a sense of relaxation. It puts the three sectors into balance. We can't live without good breathing, and we can't eliminate without good digestion, and so on. There are more and more people who ask for shiatsu, often, and yes, only shiatsu. People try massage with oils, which I also like. I also practice it. But it's true that with shiatsu, there is a force, a strength, a power greater than ourselves. People need this energy. And only shiatsu is capable of bringing this on. Ah, thank you. It's true that it does you good, but it does hurt sometimes. You feel the pain when you press on certain points. It feels good, but more afterwards. That's right. Not during. Yeah, that's right. Because while the pressure points are being applied, you feel the places where you have pain. You feel more pain than the relaxation of a massage. That's right. It's true that now that I've massaged you, your body tells you, I have pain, but one day I'll have less pain. So little by little. It's true that for me, today therapeutic massage is better than taking drugs. This new trend of shiatsu for stressed executives and directors is in full swing. And it's not only house calls that work. All luxury institutions have taken to it, and some other establishments outright bet everything on it. One of the most beautiful centers in the world can be found on the other side of the Atlantic, in Canada. Montreal close to four million inhabitants with its outskirts. Tall buildings, a business center, it feels a bit like New York here. And to relax, just a 15-minute car ride away, we find an incredible haven for massage fans. Here, everything has been conceived for the well-being of clients, including an incredible view on Lake Batur. 
It's not yet 8 a.m. No one has yet arrived to enjoy the thermal waterfalls or the steam baths, but there's movement in one of the massage cabins already. Uh, so do I look at you? No, no. Pierre Blais is perhaps the star masseuse of Canada. Okay, just a little bit higher? Yeah. He has been recruited by the spa for his massages and to create an ad campaign around himself. If the clients come to the spa, it's as much for the view as for his expert hands. Pierre Blais has been massaging for more than 20 years. He's acquired a good reputation. He massages the greatest tennis players in the world. His agenda is overbooked, but what he likes is to surprise his clients in proposing them new things. This morning, this young woman will experience a massage in warm waters. So I'm going to put a cushion under your neck and two cushions under your legs, which I'll take away from time to time. Just like in any massage, you really have to let yourself go. Don't try to help me. In the beginning, the challenge may be just to let yourself go because you'll lose your bearings. You may try to support yourself, but the cushions will support you, and me as well. It's a very undulating massage. There are moments when I'm going to let you go, moments when you're going to travel the whole length of the pool with lots of movements. It's like being rocked, combined with massage at the same time. It's called aquakine massage. It's a powerful massage, very, very powerful in terms of how you feel, because you lose your sense of orientation, so the rocking is a little bit disorientating. Helen really let herself go, but in the beginning she was sometimes a little stiff before she got used to it. But once you're accustomed to it, the massage can really pinpoint the tensions in the person and release them. And as you've seen, there's lots of rocking. We were rocked a lot once, when we were very young. Later it's rare, and to be put into a state like that again makes you regress. But it's a pleasure. But you have to experience it to understand. You really let yourself go completely. You lose your bearings. You don't hear anything because your head is underwater. You close your eyes, so you lose your sense of sight, of hearing, and you're weightless. You feel yourself floating. I don't know if it's the rocking in the water or because Pierre is very soothing. I feel like I'm in a cocoon, in total security. Pierre Blay no longer needs to prove himself in massage therapy. His career is well established. But in the last years, he has fixed a new objective that is very dear to him. Massage for babies and children. Here we are in a residential area of Montreal. Little Isaac is precocious for his age. His mother, Mary Christine, took a course on baby massage, and ever since, her son has changed. 
He always needed to be with us to communicate with us. Now it's better. I can set him down more. He plays with his toys. He needs to be with his dad and mom. He's a communicator. So now, what are we going to do? We're going to have a nice massage, sweetie. A nice massage. There's your pacifier. Look. Can I give you a little massage? Yeah, mommy's going to give you a massage, okay? Yeah. You like that? Feels good, huh? On your legs? You want to chat with me? I'm listening, sweetie. I massage him daily, especially at bath time and nap time. He stays still. He stays in a relaxed position, which is not very normal for him. He always needs to move. But there he's calm. He wants to chat a bit, babble. I feel he appreciates that. He likes that. He plays with his feet. He was a colicky baby when he was very young. He was impulsive, cried a lot. We looked for things to calm him. I tried a lot of things, but massage is the most effective in calming him. Babies are always sucking either nursing at the breast, on a pacifier, on objects, and in the end their jaws ache. But they can't express that, of course, so it seems like something that relaxes them. He reacts a lot. That feels good, huh? In the evening before bedtime. Massaging babies is Pierre Blais' specialty and Pierre won't hesitate to travel all across Canada to spread his message. Today he's going to Marie Christine's place, but it's more for the dad than for the mom, who's already converted, having seen the benefits of massage. Pierre brings a teddy bear to demonstrate the massage techniques. Under no conditions does he come in contact with the children. For us men, massage is a good vehicle to really touch, see, really participate in the life of our child. Because we're not really directed in birthing or nursing. So what we can do is massage our children, which is very simple. When the child is lying on his back, like this teddy bear, you take his leg like this, and you bend it up from the knee to the thigh towards the belly, like this. And you continue that gently, while looking at the baby in the eyes, to really see his reaction. You can do it with both legs. You go progressively with the compress. You really check the signs of the baby, to what point he can take the compression. We often think that babies are very fragile, but on the contrary, if we really only stroke them softly, it annoys them more than anything. It's important to see the baby's reactions to see how he likes to be touched. So through that, you develop communication here. For me, it's something important. Already very soon after the birth, skin on skin was a sort of massage. When I had him on me, it was a bit like a back massage. There wasn't a method or anything, it was just like that. I flattered him. It's really something that I'll continue and that I would like to develop. As a man, I would say that ideally, when the dads join this game, it gives them a privileged contact. I've seen situations in small families where after the birth and breastfeeding is finished, even when massage was already being used, the child's gaze was turned towards the father. Even if the moms were surprised and said, hey, I still exist. But the child was nourished by the mother. And afterwards, he directed himself towards the father. 
With his approach to massage for the very young, Pierre Blay is also involved in an unprecedented project, teaching children how to massage each other. We're off to Gatineau, a two-hour drive from Montreal. The area where Pierre is going is very modest, a high unemployment rate, uninviting apartment blocks. We're far from the grand luxury spa where he practices. But in this vacation center, massage is also being practiced. For the last 15 years in Canada, there are classes for children 4 to 12 years old. Before starting, Pierre and Brigitte, one of his former students, will show them small cards that represent the massages that they'll perform. Presenting massage as a game is the first step in getting the kids interested. The baker kneads the dough for his bread. So the child puts his hands on his friend's shoulders and kneads the dough. For the spoon, we take a spoon and we slide it along to pick up something. The child will take his forearm and slide it on top of the shoulder, like this. The rules here are strict. No adult massages the children. The massages are done through clothing and no one is obliged to participate. The sessions are short, 15 minutes maximum. Okay, do you remember how to do ice skating? There are two types. We have the fast one and the slow one. I want to see the fast one. We go up and we come down again. And here's the Papa Bear. So we use more pressure. But don't fall. We see a greater capacity for concentration for a much longer period of time than what we're used to in seeing in children today. A child will not touch another child before getting his permission, and it's true that that completely changes the child's behavior, even outside the classroom, even in the courtyard. When a child pushes, the other will say that he didn't agree to being pushed. And we go back down. Yeah, that's right. You're a big bear. A big bear. When I massage people, it was like I was in their body. When you touch them, you feel their heart beating. The first day that I learned how to massage, I wanted to see if my parents would like that. I tried it, and it really worked. They really liked it. They said thank you in the end. It was good. I felt like I could be a good masseuse. That's right. Learning massage when you're 5, 8 or 10 years old has to be done through fun and play and Pierre knows a lot of little games on the subject. So today my friends were going to make a pizza. So the back is my pizza stone. So I spread out all of my dough, I flatten it, I dab it with a little sauce and there I'm going to put some pieces of hot peppers and some mushrooms and I sprinkle it with cheese and now I'm going to put it in the oven and it's going to be really, really hot. I'll bake it and after that we're going to be able to cut the pizza and to eat it. So instead of always pushing buttons on an electronic game, where there are a limited choice of responses, good or bad, the child, who will later become an adult, has to imagine solutions. And if he hasn't lost his imagination, if he's developed it young, we'll be able to use it later. That will completely change the lives of children, of the course, of the families as well.
in class, and elsewhere. And at the end of the line, it's society that will change. When it spreads, there are more and more children who have tried this. Touching each other is natural. No child's parents refused after explaining that it was all done with respect, only between children, that no adult, not even their teacher, could touch them. I would act as the teacher's guinea pig. That reassured them, and all the children participated. Massages for children are still uncommon practice. With the taboos concerning their bodies, Western culture is less familiar with this practice. For Pierre Blay, it will take time to let massage for young children into their customs. But there are other precursors, like here with Matthew. He'll be receiving a client at his home to give her a session of EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique. EFT was invented in the early 90s by the Californian Gary Craig, known for his work with veterans of the Vietnam War. EFT is a new technique that deals with light and deep trauma, and which is becoming increasingly popular worldwide. EFT is a modern cousin of acupuncture, without needles. But the fingers are used to tap the meridians, which are well known in Chinese acupuncture. Then we blend that with a more conventional therapy, talking. We make an exchange, we discuss, and then at the same time we tap. You would say it's a massage from the point of view of the energetic, that is to say the meridians. It's not the blood, nor the lymphatic, nor the nervous system. It's simply a current that circulates in the body. It's like the electrical system of our body. You can see it like that. There is a form of tapping, and we're going to stimulate the meridians at the same time that we'll be discussing. The system points to the problem. We focus on it. We do the tapping. And that is what will help us to untie those knots. I don't want to fight with my mother. Sometimes she gives me the impression that she's very proud of me because of my studies. But in my personal life, I'm not sure. So you have the impression that she's not always proud of you in your private life? Of my choices. Of your choices. She doesn't approve of your choices. So what would you say if we worked on that relationship with anger that your mother had? We'll start with that, and we'll see where that takes us. The intensity of the tapping doesn't have to be very strong, but it shouldn't be too soft either. Just a little tap, a little pressure, a stimulation. We'll start with rounds. You can do them like this. And after, we'll go to this one, which is at the end of the eyebrow, from the corner of the eye. And we tap like this. And then we'll go to the points. And then you'll just repeat after me. My mother's disappointment. My mother's great disappointment. My mother's great disappointment with me. My mother's great disappointment with me. And you're going to have to type this point here, and you repeat after me. Even if my mother is angry with me, even if my mother is angry with me, I love and accept myself completely. I love and accept myself completely. We're going to repeat that again two times. So, even if my mother is disappointed in me, even if my mother is disappointed in me, there are people who see this as completely crazy, and then impossible. You can feel ridiculous, but the results speak for themselves. People are starting to tell themselves, okay, we are clearly seeing results. That is, the concrete scientific explanation of the energy system can't explain it all. But the results are there. And they, they are concrete. The session lasts close to one and a half hours. And what attracts people the most is that you can practice it by yourself. That's what convinced Martin, a former client of Matthew. Martin is a musician. He sings and plays the drums. 
he performs his covers of Phil Collins songs all over the world. But even if he's used to performing on stage, he had to stop his touring due to his stage fright. The room was full and then I couldn't go out anymore. I didn't think it's fun anymore, I just couldn't go on. And then you took me aside and said, let's try to do something new with you, and it's called EFT. You do it like this. You explained everything to me, and after, you went into action. And you know what? It worked. What happens is that before a show, you have to go on and perform in front of 1,500, 2,000, 3,000, or even 6,000 people who are what? They're impatiently waiting to see you. They've paid a lot of money for those tickets that they bought to see you, and I often feel complex about that, like I'm, like I'm an imposter. And then I devaluate myself. What can I really bring? After all, I don't sing that well. It's the ego that takes up all my inside space and it undermines me and then takes over my whole body. I mean, I get tense. I cut myself off from my body. I don't feel anything anymore. All I feel is lots of tension and terrible because my body is so tense and it paralyzes me and I, and I can't sing. Ugh. I, don't, I don't breathe anymore. And you know, you have to breathe to sing. <laughs> Practicing EFT in stressful situations, for Martin, it's become a part of his daily life. In his car, backstage at concerts, or even here in this park, EFT can be practiced anywhere. Even if I still am anxious before a performance, I love myself and I accept myself as I am. I love myself and I accept myself as I am. And in fact, the attacks are less frequent and sometimes when the stress mounts a little, the path is already laid out and I feel better immediately. Healing the body of its ills soothing tensions related to stress in order to be your best at your work or changing the world through our children massage seems to be the key today a key to being in harmony with one's body and spirit and at this moment when the virtual dominates more and more and our existence seems like a whirlpool the exploration of the body through massage invented by the Chinese some 5,000 years ago has become a new challenge in the search for well-being in the 21st century. 